Okay, this is a special video for my favorite D. We will be discussing the book Natural Law, Nature of Desire from Allura's Cave. This book got excellent reviews on the internet, which is why I purchased it, and it is terrible. So, uh, the subject of the book is Mackenzie Mac Nighthorse is a homicide cop. And he's going undercover in a BDSM club in order to figure out who is killing innocent, submissive men. He meets a woman there who is uh, new to the scene. I believe she may be learning to love again. Will he fall in love with her? Will they have hot, kinky sex? Is she the murderer? Will we know? So um, his name is Mac. Her name is Violet. I bet you're wondering if what color her eyes are. <laughs> You will find out. <clears throat> so this is when he first meets her. Do, 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 do. Whereas most doms preferred black and leather for the strong message they conveyed, this woman had chosen a dress of hunter green velvet. <sighs> he had to stop at her face much sooner than he anticipated. She was a woodland fairy, a pixie. With the heels, the top of her head reached his shoulder. She wore a simple silver cross around her neck, and a pair of earrings that were a fall of silver stars. The raven black hair falling to her waist was not hers, but a beautiful wig that did great things for her small oval face, her skin looking like cream, and his coffee in the morning liquid and smooth. He bet those lavender eyes were contacts, but her beauty could not be disguised. Whatever her hair and eye color, she was a knockout. Her lips were liquid, red and full, just like he liked them. The smell of lavender clung to her, with an underpinning of vanilla. Oh, irony. And his nose was interested in having him take a tasty bite, even if the rest of his body was being sternly admonished by his mind to stay in check. She was so delicate, it was hard to believe she was a dom, but it resonated off her. A less experienced sub wouldn't know, but he did. From the direct way she met his eyes, assessing him in a manner so potent, he found himself fighting the urge to please her by casting his gaze down. I have a room below, she said. It wasn't a request. I want you there. She pointed through the glass and saw a room provisioned like a horse stall. I'm nobody's pony, sweetheart, and made no move past her. I made no move past her. I'm not looking for a pony, she returned. I don't recall giving you a choice about it, slave. He bared his teeth in a smile. Make me, sugar. What does that mean? Confusion and irritation crossed her eyes. It means I don't go down easy. Blah, blah, blah. More banter. The pixie reached up, caught her long nailed fingers in the open collar of his shirt, and dug into his flesh. She jerked, bringing him down a few inches. Not because he wasn't strong enough to pull back, but because she made it clear she'd take a piece of him with the fabric if he didn't. At the same time, he felt the hard length of the riding crop she carried thrust home between a crease, the crease of his thigh and the heavy weight of his testicles. Testicles is a very sexy word. She exerted a pressure that was uncomfortable, not painful, but the mo motion definitely caught his attention. The violet eyes and black lit wig hid her true looks, but not the satisfied set of that sinful mouth. I want the pit bull, the one who runs his yard. Her crop hand slid down to grasp him firmly by the balls, still keeping the prop in the equation so he felt the insistent shove of the weapon as well as the curled clutch of her fingers against his hardening cock. Get your ass downstairs into that room. I want this shirt off. Grr. You honor me with your attention, he said quietly, meeting her gaze and then lowering his own, following etiquette to convey his respect that she'd won the point. But I can't attend you this night, much as I'm already regretting it. Dun dun dun! So terrible. So yeah, um, the best way to meet a man in a video at some club is to take your hands and use one to kind of grab him by the neck, and then you just go for the balls with the other one. Just neck, balls. <sighs> yeah. Amazing. Jesse blew her off. That was very sad. Um, and then she's like, oh god, how do I feel about this? I don't know. It's very confusing. She had witnessed interactions between high-powered subs like this one and absolute masters, masters capitalized, like Tyler. 
She'd felt weak-kneed watching them, aching for a taste of what that of that supreme nirvana, a one-on-one -on -one interaction where the will of master and desire of sub, I guess they don't get pronouns, melded into an explosive energy of its own, a magical synergy captivating them as well as those watching them. That power had rolled between her and this sub. She'd seen it in the shift of his eyes, the shudder of his magnificent body. Well, maybe she'd leave him alone for a few minutes. Dun, dun, dun. Oh, other amazing things. Um, so it's very shocking that this guy's a submissive because he's tall. Tall men are, are not submissives. Uh, he's tall, he has hair on his chest, and he knows what he wants, and that's very shocking. Tallness is just, you know, crazy.